Hi everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm very happy to have you here guys. In today's video we will be trying out a few fragrances from a new brand on the market. Uh, the brand is called Maison Astral and from what I have seen they are specialized in creating inspirations of popular designer and niche fragrances. I have here six fragrances with me today. I mean one full fragrance and five samples. I think I will try out today three fragrances and I will leave the other three for a future video. But yes, now from doing my little research, uh, they are under Golf Orchid, which is a brand in the Middle East. Uh, and they have, again, under their umbrella brand that I have seen on Instagram mentioned and on a few different websites. But I will insert here a few more information about the brand. Uh, I have read about them. Honestly, I have went on their website to read more about them and from what i understood they also have some business in the cosmetic industry from like in the manufacturing industry but i don't want to say anything that's not true uh, so i will just leave it like this yes before we start uh these fragrances were sent to me by dubai collection now you can find this brand on dubai collection but this is not a sponsor video guys i am not paid to talk about the fragrances and they actually they gave me a budget and they left me choose fragrances so i chose a full fragrance like a full bottle that i wanted to try and it is this one it is gorgeous but more on that a bit later and i also chose five decans so let me tell you all the fragrances and what are the inspirations and then i will tell you what three fragrances i want to talk about in today's video so the first one we have here it's called red velvet now for these ones like i've mentioned i only have samples of them but i will insert here a photo with a beautiful presentation something that i have seen even with this fragrance, uh, oh, let me actually turn it, even with this fragrance as well, you guys, they have gorgeous presentations, like the, like the type of presentation that they have given to this fragrance, okay, no, let's rephrase that, like the kind of presentation that this fragrance has, it's almost like it's an experience kind of presentation in a way. They definitely paid a lot of attention when it comes to details, I feel like. Now back to Red Velvet, this is an inspiration of a fragrance from Burberry, which is called, can you guess, can you guess? Uh, let me give you a hint. It has strawberry. Yes, it's Burberry hair. I think this is the first inspiration by a Middle Eastern house that I see of Burberry hair. Like I've mentioned, they actually let me choose the fragrances that I would like to test. So I was very excited to test this fragrance. I am very familiar with the scent of Burberry hair because uh, like what's the like my partner's sister. She, uh, that fragrance used to be her signature fragrance. So whenever we would meet, she would use to smell just like Burberry hair to the point that I now associate that scent with her. But yeah, uh, this fragrance I will actually talk about in today's video. Next fragrance is called uh, Pink Crush. Now Pink Crush is Maison Asrar's inspiration of a fragrance from Mugle from for Angel Nova. Uh, I have tried Angel Nova and I do really like how it smells and I'm going to give you just a small spoiler. It does give justice to the original in my opinion. But again, this is another fragrance that I will talk about in today's video. Third fragrance that I have here is called Hamsat Ishk. Now this is supposed to be their inspiration of a fragrance from uh, Givenchy, the Lanterre de Rouge. I have only smelled that fragrance here and there. I can't say that I have a vivid memory of the scent. So, uh, in the next video, I will talk about this fragrance in the upcoming video. I will focus more on how this one smells on its own and compare it to the other versions of uh, L'Enterzi by Givenchy. Now, the fourth fragrance is called Daham or Daham. And this is an inspiration. Yeah, this is the one for men. I wanted to test something for men as well in today's video. Now, I know that the majority of my audience is made of women. I have around 70% women on my channel, but I have 30% men that are watching my video as well. So I wanted to include something for the men uh, that watch my videos. Now, this is an inspiration of a fragrance from Giorgio Armani, Stronger With You for Men. I have not tried that fragrance, honestly. Yeah, again, I will speak about this fragrance in the upcoming video. Now, the fifth fragrance is called Adorable. Now, when I saw the name, honestly, the name doesn't fit the fragrance in my opinion because the, there's absolutely nothing adorable in a scent about this fragrance. This is supposed to be an inspiration of a fragrance from Chopard called Rose Maleki. And again, I think they really did a beautiful job uh, when it comes to this fragrance as well. But just to let you know, there's absolutely nothing adorable about this fragrance. This fragrance is 
more of a statement Middle Eastern like fragrance and last but not least the sixth fragrance is called uh, Fahama and this is their inspiration of love don't be shy or love love don't be shy I think or just love no love don't be shy <laughs> Um, love don't be shy by Killian. Now, okay. As again, I want to share my thoughts about this fragrance as well in today's video. Okay, so let's start. Uh, let's actually start with the samples. Hi guys, this is me from the future. I want to let you know that since filming the video, I have actually bought red velvet. I bought with my own money a bottle of it because I really enjoyed how it smelled. Uh, so I want to show you how the actual bottle looks as well as the presentation. But I want to mention more of a negative aspect about this particular fragrance uh, or like about this particular batch that I have. Now, this is the fragrance. It looks beautiful. It also had like a necklace or like a bracelet kind of uh, jewelry around it. I took it off because it was not, I was not feeling it. But what I have noticed is that, um, and I have only noticed it with this particular bottle of red velvet, I haven't noticed uh, this aspect with the other bottle that I have of Fahama, is the fact that this fragrance has impurities in it like impurities that you shouldn't see in a fragrance. I don't know, it was the first thing that caught my eye when I looked at it and I definitely think the brand should pay closer attention when it comes to the quality control, when it comes to how they actually pour the fragrance in the bottle, like what's the actual process. Now, by impurities, I don't mean like human hair or anything like this, but like some, like some small black stuff and I think there's some plastic in it in a sense. I mean, no, I don't think you can actually see it here, but I will film a close up with the fragrance so you can uh, see what I'm talking about. Now, this is, I feel like this is more of a negative aspect. Uh, like who wants to see impurities in their fragrances, you know? But again, this issue, I have only seen it with this fragrance, with red velvet. I haven't seen it with their other fragrance, which also has a transparent, translucent kind of bottle. Um, but yeah. So yeah, basically this is what I wanted to let you know. In case you decide to buy a full bottle of this fragrance, be aware of that. It could have some impurities. Now, this is not the first fragrance that I see this happening with when it comes to Middle Eastern brands. Uh, but this is the first time that I see it so noticeable in a way, like it's there. Like even when I look at the bottle, like you know how like the fragrance moves inside. Like I see like black stuff, like just floating in my fragrance and they shouldn't be there, you know? So yeah in case the brand i don't know if one day the brand will watch this video i truly hope that they will pay closer attention uh, when it comes to the quality control and when it comes to the method that they choose to pour their fragrances into the bottle and something there didn't go right okay so this is what i wanted to say uh now back to the video uh thank you for watching and bye <laughs> So the first fragrance I want to start with is called Red Velvet, the inspiration of Burberry Her by Burberry. Now, before I mention how this fragrance smells and what I feel about it and if it manages to capture the essence of Burberry Her or not, I just want to let you know that for today's video, I will spray these ones on paper, but I have tried all of them on my skin, even the one for men. Okay, so I know how the fragrance develops on the skin very well. Okay, so this one, yeah, first of all, this is a very projecting fragrance. It does have something that when you spray, this fragrance like fills up your room, fills up your nostrils. It's, it's not an intimate fragrance. It's a fragrance that people around you will smell it on you. Like the moment I sprayed it on the paper, it just like infiltrated my nostrils in a way. Okay, so this fragrance, yeah. Look, I will be very honest. They managed to really capture the DNA of Burberry Her. But in my opinion, they added few more notes and accords compared to the other fragrance. So to me, it's a bit more complex and not as simplistic as the previous one. It's okay. So take that fake strawberry scent of Burberry Her with that specific translucent, transparent, round Baccarat Rouge-esque vibe that you have in that fragrance. So I feel like they took the DNA of Burberry Her but they also added that like those sweet citruses from Al Haramein Amber Wood Gold Edition, which is an inspiration of Herba Pura. And they also made the oak moss here a tad bit more pronounced. But the oak moss here, to my nose at least, it's almost like it's wrapped in all these fruity facets. So you don't get like the full 
full complexity of the smell of oak moss you just get hints of it you know and you will get it more in the dry down than in the opening to me in the opening it's very sweet it's very like i don't know it has something that leaves my mouth watering in a sense it's a fruity bomb it's you have that like fake artificial strawberry here you have some sweet citruses like some mandarin orange so it's very sweet it's slightly fruity slightly citrusy and then comes the Baccarat Rouge-esque vibe that you have it here as well. Uh, but to me, it's definitely not as pronounced. You don't have the medicinal facets that you had in other fragrances inspired by Baccarat Rouge. Now, compared to uh, the original Burberry, let me just say, I think they're, I think this is a great dupe. Now, that one is much more simplistic. I feel like that one doesn't have all these different nuances. So this fragrance is very sweet. Like I've mentioned, you have the sweet fruity facet of the strawberry. The strawberry here doesn't smell like your ultra ripe strawberries that you take from your garden and then you eat them and they are sweet and juicy and gorgeous. No, this one smells like that fake strawberry in a sense, you know, that like artificial strawberry, like a strawberry scent made out of concentrated strawberry powder or something like this you know but i think it's beautiful it definitely adds a nice touch i think i find this fragrance very modern very outgoing very like um i think this fragrance is for someone who's very extroverted her or his sense of fashion is very developed in a way but they like modern clothes you know they like modern outfits they like trends but they take bits and pieces from, from the trends and they adapt them to their own style i don't know this is the kind of person that pops in my mind when i'm smelling this fragrance it's it's, if it's a woman, it's a very like girly, playful woman. She's like radiating, you know, she's very like, she wears a lot of prints. She wears a lot of like, I don't know, like flowy dresses with flower prints, with polka dots. She wears a lot of pink. She wears, I don't know, she likes, um, how do you call them in English? Like t-shirts with different yeah, prints, I think, you know, with like all kind of tags on them, you know, she, her style, it's more, it's more fun in a sense. Yeah, also this fragrance is very loud. It's not for someone who's shy. It's not for someone who doesn't want their fragrances to project. This is for those who like their fragrances to fill up rooms, to project. Um, I don't know. This, I feel like it's for those people who like to make a statement with their fragrances. Now, to me, like I've mentioned, they basically took the DNA of Burberry Her and to me they added a few different notes and accords. So the overall composition is a bit more complex compared to Burberry Her, but they definitely have the DNA of Burberry Her. Uh, like I've mentioned, with the added sweet citruses that you have in Amber Wood Gold Edition by Alharamain, with the added heavier oak moss that overall I feel like as you get closer to the dry down, the oak moss starts to show more and it just adds this slight depth to the fragrance in a way but like i have mentioned in the beginning as well the oak moss here it's not you don't get the full complexity of the oak moss here you know you just get a slight darkness uh, or like a slight depth from that scent but it's wrapped in all the other fruity nuances now as this one starts to develop on my skin um in the middle, I would say in the heart, I do get something that reminds me a bit of Anna Biedrur by Latafa. And also something very interesting, as this fragrance goes through the dry down, to me it just gets like denser, rounder, creamier in a sense even. To me it smells like, like a strawberry milkshake but with like fake artificial strawberry powder you know mixed with that specific uh, translucent transparent vibe that you also have in Baccarat Rouge and with an added oak mustache here that's a bit more richer now that it gets closer to the base that just adds this slight greenness to the fragrance in a sense to me this is not a one-on-one -on -one dupe it's more of an inspiration but it's a beautiful inspiration honestly again it's loud it's playful it's flirty it's outgoing it's easygoing at the same time you don't have to think a lot about reaching for this kind of fragrance it's the kind of fragrance that i don't know to me embodies somewhere like summer parties like i don't know like going out like I would picture this fragrance on someone who's very social in a way, you know, she has, she like goes to different places, with, she has a lot of friends groups, I don't know. Surprisingly on paper, it does have a slight shower gel feel that on skin I don't detect, on skin and on clothes I do not detect. Okay, so let's move on to the next fragrance, uh, let's move on to Pink Crush. Okay, this fragrance, look, this fragrance I really like it and no one <laughs> close to me wears it. Uh, 
it's really beautiful really beautiful this is a fruity rose it's a gorgeous fragrance it's again it really manages to capture the essence of the original fragrance but again the bottles for these two fragrances are so beautiful you guys yeah this this makes my mouth water again this is delicious it's again this is for someone who's very outgoing who's fun she, that person is like a fun presence to be around you know like they joke a lot they laugh a lot like their laugh is like contagious in a sense you know it's but that person like the, that woman is also like very feminine you know like she dresses very feminine but not as like girly or youthful in a sense her style is a bit more classy and timeless but not too too classy it's yeah okay so this fragrance how it smells like to me like if i were to like deconstruct this fragrance to me i think it would have like three parts in a sense uh to me in the opening the note or the accord that i detect the most uh and the first thing that i'm hit with when i smell it on paper as well as on skin is a red fruity accord that's very sweet cold and crisp you know it's like i don't know a lot of red fruits like a variety of red fruits put together very cold and very crisp and very sweet at the same time but that specific sweetness of red fruit you know you also have this beautiful rich pink rose feel that as you wear this fragrance will develop more and more on your skin into a full bodied beautiful rich rose like a rich pink rose and as this fragrance starts to develop on your skin when you smell it and when you smell that rose accord it gives you this sensation that you're like dipping your face into rose petals you know like into pink full-bodied roses it's a beautiful rose accord i feel like no, but you know i'm a sucker for rose in fragrances so you do get some raw greenness in a sense that like freshly cut flower stem type of feel here as well but it's more in the background it's not the main thing you will smell and a slight lemony feel it's almost like the rose accord has a slight lemony undertone to it this fragrance again this to me spring summer warm weather i don't know even though it has rose and i know rose has a very bad reputation in the fragrance i mean not a very bad reputation but a lot of people don't like it they associate it with vintage fragrances with old school fragrances with i don't know like uh, soap because you know you had a lot of like growing up at least i smelled dozens of rose scented soaps you know and it's not look i don't like soapy roses i'll be very honest i don't like vintage roses as well but this kind of fruity rose i think it's beautiful it's modern it's timeless in a sense it's the kind of fragrance that smells good now it will smell good in 10 years i don't think it will ever go out of style in a way because it's quite it's quite simplistic but again a very beautiful simplistic fragrance a simplistic fragrance done well yeah no middle eastern vibe to it by the way now something that i really like about this fragrance is that as it starts to develop on your skin especially on the skin here on paper i don't get that aspect uh that much but on my skin once it starts to develop the main thing that i smell is the rose first then the red fruits move into the background and the rose starts to get this very like beautiful dense rich full bodied feel it starts to be much more present it has this like slight sweetness a slight lemony undertone to it, it but like i've mentioned it gives you the sensation that you're like dipping your face in rose petals or that you i don't know you're in a, like a garden full of roses and you go to those like pink roses and you just dip your nose into them so you can smell them so you can like really inhale the smell of them you know the rose accord here has the same effect it's a beautiful yeah it's very modern the, the word that describes this fragrance to me it's modern in a way it's the rose here has nothing granny about it nothing vintage nothing powdery nothing nothing that would make you think of a rose accord from the past you know like a rose fragrance from the past it's modern it's feminine it's outgoing it's again i think it has something youthful about it but very not youthful in a sense of like childish but youthful in a sense of it has a very radiating energy it's the kind of fragrance that i think would work all year round but would shine the most in the summertime and again even though it's rich in a sense you know it's not like that thin fragrance or the kind of fragrance that fades after an hour but it has something very i feel like because of the crisp fruitiness here you could easily pull this one off in the summer without it being too suffocating without it without it being too much you know what i mean i hope you do okay so those were my thoughts about pink crush 
I do really like it, honestly. I like it and again, it kind of went on my wish list as well, you know, because the summer is approaching and I realized I don't have any summery fragrances in my collection. I mean, I guess I could have, I do have some. I have Anab, I have Soiral the Hub, I have, I have that one, Mademoiselle Twist, uh, that I really enjoyed, but that like, that is like a typical, typical summer fragrance, you know, but I want something, I don't know, I want something with rose for the summertime and I don't have anything with rose for the summertime. Uh, I just have like my heavy roses, you know, that I wear in the summertime as well, don't get me wrong, but yeah. Okay, so the last fragrance for today's video is actually this one. I wanted to keep this one as the last because I want to insert your beautiful clip with the presentation. You guys, the presentation this one has, and also it's so affordable by the way, but Look, something that I have noticed, by the way, I have these fragrances in my collection for a month, I think, by now. Uh, it took me a while to test them all and to film a video because I was a bit off of YouTube. But um, when I was off of YouTube, I was using this fragrance a lot. I don't know if you can see, uh, but I was actually, this fragrance has quite a dent in it, look. Do you see? Like at a certain point, it was like my grab and go day to day fragrance. And this fragrance, oh my god, this fragrance took me back to my childhood on summer break, like from school I was on summer break. Oh my god, I was going out with my friends, oh my god, and we had a honeysuckle, how do you call it, like a honeysuckle bush. And you know that you can actually eat the honeysuckle, basically like if you, um, like if you take out like a piece of the honeysuckle like if you take out one honeysuckle uh, and you rip a little bit at the end and you have like a slight strand there like a very thin strand and if you slightly gently push that strand it comes out with nectar like flower nectar and if you taste it like you would basically you would like taste the nectar and it would taste very sweet i don't know let me know if you have ever uh not eaten but like tasted honeysuckle nectar in a way uh when i was a kid i used to do that with my friends oh my god you guys this fragrance brought back to me so many beautiful memories that how to say like i completely forgot about them in a sense they were like so in the back of my mind that i was not even thinking about them but like this fragrance yeah this fragrance brought me back to those moments. I was like in fourth grade. I don't even know how many how how many years I had back then. Uh, and this is something. Look, this is something very beautiful about a fragrance. You know, it has this true power to bring you to make you travel through time in a sense. And you know how sometimes we forget a lot, especially from our childhood. You know, uh, from an early age, we tend to forget some things. At least I easily forget. I don't know. I'm not very good with time. Uh, but when I smell certain things, they bring out those memories. It's almost like if I close my eyes, like like a movie. You know, it's like. Um, it's like a movie of my childhood is going on, you know, like in my mind when I close my eyes and I even see myself, I see my friends, but I see them with like the faces when they were younger. It's beautiful. But yeah, now back to this fragrance. Uh, uh, yeah, so this fragrance, something that I wanted to mention, I think it will make an amazing gift. Either I have already inserted, if not, I will insert now a clip with the presentation. This fragrance doesn't feel cheap. This fragrance feels very luxurious, even though it's affordable. This has a beautiful presentation, you guys. And not only that, but I think this was made for the small hands of a woman. I don't have, I have very small hands. So a lot of, like I have small white hands, you know, but a lot of bottles that are made for men or like more unisex fragrances, you know, um, you can tell in a sense because they are so like, sometimes I cannot grab one with just like one hand, you know, uh, but when it comes to, with this one, this one is so smooth. This one is so soft, so delicate, so like, it's like a pleasure to touch it in a sense, you know? Now the cap, okay, so what I will do, I will bring this one to the mic and I will tap it gently so you can hear that it's metal, hold on. Yeah. Yeah, it's a heavy cap, you know? It's not one of those like cheap plastic caps. It's quite a heavy cap. Uh, this one here, it's actually plastic, but it's a very well done kind of plastic. Again, doesn't feel cheap. Look, am I blinding you with the fragrance? I hope not, oh yep. There, yeah, I'm blinding you. Okay, this fragrance, this fragrance, I will actually spray it on my skin because maybe I will wear this one for today, let's see. Where should I spray it? Um, okay, so I will spray it here. Now, again, like I've mentioned, 
This is supposed to be an inspiration of Love Don't Be Shy by Killian. I have not tried it fragrance. Um, oh my god, yeah. You guys like legit, like when I smell it, oh my god, I remember eating honeysuckle, like wow, it's yeah, now the opening, the opening to me uh, smells like pink bubble gum from Orbit, you know, like when you were a kid then you would like buy pink bubble gum. It has that specific smell, so that like artificial pink bubble gum smell with a floral accord that's very warm and to me it smells like flower nectar and it's also, it has something solar about it. It's a very luminous fragrance in a way, but warm as well. Um, so you have all these with a slight powdery feel in the background and a little bit of greenness but the greenness I feel like it's almost like it's lost somewhere in the background it's not the main thing that I smell when it comes to this fragrance it's almost like in the first 20 minutes it does have this slight not sharpness but more I don't know to me it's like there's a fight between the bubble gum feel here and the honeyed florals um, it's almost like one is trying to overpower, overpower the other one in a sense. Uh, it's not something that's too, too noticeable, but for me it is noticeable. I don't mind it, but I feel like um, the beautiful, warm, solar, honeyed florals, like especially the honeysuckle, this smells like honeysuckle, uh, starts to shine let's just say after 30 minutes into wearing this fragrance in a sense, because after that, I feel like the pink bubblegum smell starts to tone down a bit. It doesn't fully go away, but it moves into the background and I feel like it almost like it leaves more room for the beautiful florals to shine here. Now the florals here, I don't know. To me, this fragrance smells like whimsical in a way. I don't know, it smells, it smells very like warm and solar and dense and and honeyed, you have a lot of honeyed florals here that have that like specific sweetness. And it's very concentrated. In the opening, especially if you have a very sensitive nose, I feel like you might get this like fight between the notes, you know? But uh, my advice would be, if you want to try this fragrance, do give it time. Um, like I've mentioned, 30 minutes in, it leaves room for the honeysuckle to shine as well as i do detect among the honeysuckle i do detect a slight orange blossom feel some vanilla in the background but the vanilla i would say adds a slight roundness to the fragrance and a slight sweetness this fragrance is very sweet but to me it's not sweet in a gourmand way it's sweet in a flower nectar honeyed florals kind of way uh, so this is very warm it's very rich it's very dense it's present it's strong but it has something very delicate and whimsical about it in a sense i don't know i would imagine this fragrance on like on like a fairy you know like she has like a crown made of flowers you know like she's running in a flowy dress like free on in a field you know like smelling all types of flowers it's beautiful. Now, to me, this fragrance, I don't know, it's like if I were to bring it back and to actually let you know how it smells, it, to me, like to bring it back to reality, let's say not to my imagination, but to me, it's feminine, it's solar, it's warm. I would picture this fragrance on a very like warm woman, like her energy is very warm, like she's smiling. I don't know, she she wears a lot of warm colors in a sense like she loves the sun she loves the summer she loves warm colors you know so her overall aura and color palette is very like warm and radiating now to me smelling it now it does have a slight naughtiness to it in a way you know it's almost like you know like someone with an angelic face or like with a very delicate face in a sense but when you get to know her you you know that she's not really that angelic you know uh but it's so beautiful. Oh my God, this fragrance is gorgeous. Now, of course, look, I am being very honest. I might be a bit biased of liking this fragrance that much because, because it brought back beautiful memories of mine uh, from when I was a kid. And I was like going out every day, like in the park with my friends. Oh my God. And yeah, it brought very beautiful memories to me. So I don't know, I feel like I have an emotional connection to this fragrance in a sense. Now, I know Love Don't Be Shy by Killian, I think it's supposed to be a sexy fragrance, like a naughty fragrance, like a provocative fragrance. This one doesn't scream sexiness to me. It's not sexy, it's radiating in a sense. It's the kind of, it's like, you know when you see women on the street and they don't have to be revealing too much in a sense, but there's something about her aura in a way, like you just feel this like warm, like 
presence in a sense. This to me is this fragrance, you know, so it's not... I can't say that it's sexy, I don't find it sexy, honestly. I find it slightly naughty in a way, you know, but um, it's beautiful, it's beautiful. My favorite part is when the honeyed florals start to shine the most. It's maybe because I have a connection with that smell, Maybe that's why that's my favorite part. But keep in mind, the opening, like I told you about that fight, you know, there's that fight going on. So keep this in mind. It's not the smoothest one, you know, it's not the most refined opening in a sense. Here, I can tell that they could have worked it a bit better, you know, to make it overall a bit smoother in the opening and not as <sighs> present, intru abrasive, I don't know what's the word in English, but... Uh, after that, I think it's a very beautiful fragrance. Now, this one, for me at least, uh, this one works as like my day-to-day -day fragrance. Like when I'm feeling feminine, when I'm feeling like, I don't know, when I'm feeling like a fairy, in a sense, you know, like a whimsical fairy. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, but when I'm feeling feminine and when I want something that, uh, I don't know, brings me a lot of happiness in a sense because this fragrance puts a smile on my face, I reach for it. You know what, I think I will actually just talk about the other ones as well in today's video. Yeah, can you tell how undecisive I am sometimes? Uh, let's move on to... which one? Let's move on to Adorable because there's nothing adorable about this. Okay, this, the, you know what, okay. This is a beautiful fragrance. It's a gorgeous, like such a well done fragrance, but it dies down so fast. This is the only thing that I don't like. I would have preferred if this fragrance, you know, like this fragrance, in my opinion, is like, I'm not here for a long time. I'm here for a good time in a sense, you know, so yeah. Okay, so I did have to take a short break, but I'm back. Now, I was talking about, the fragrance called Adorable. Now, Adorable, like I've mentioned, is their inspiration of Rose Maliki by Chopard. I don't remember smelling that fragrance. I remember smelling Amber, Amber Maliki. Yeah, I haven't tried that fragrance, but this, I would say, it's a same profile that I have met, that I have smelled, like traces of it in other different fragrances. Now, to me, my only complaint about this fragrance is that it doesn't last. I mean, it dies down pretty fast, but the fragrance on its own, it's a beautiful, bold, loud and opulent kind of fragrance. Again, it's made around the rose, but I feel like, like rose and saffron are the main things that I smell. The saffron here, like this fragrance smells red, like red, fiery and very passionate in a way. And I've noticed that usually saffron can give me this sensation in some fragrances. The rose here is a rich but dry, desert like dry kind of red rose you do get some like leathery gasoline undertones but they are not too too much and they are not the main things that i smell they just add this like very interesting facet to the fragrance the overall fragrance is very dry it's very like warm this fragrance smells sun kissed in a way it's almost like you have all these notes but you put them on like a on like a table under the beaming sun in the desert and then you smell them you know at like 50 degrees celsius in a way it has this like heat to it in a sense it's it's beautiful, it's beautiful, it's loud, but like I've mentioned, this is the kind of fragrance that that, should, that says I'm not here for a long time, but I'm here for a good time. So for the few hours that it lasts on my skin, see, I have not tried this one on clothes. I think on clothes I could get it up to like six hours, seven hours, but I would reapply it, honestly. So you have the saffron, you have the rose, you have the leathery accord here. And then in the background, you have a rich cedar wood feel. Uh, so that from time to time, the woody accord here has this like soft pencil shave like touch in the background. It's very interesting. It's most like when you shave your pencils in a way, you know, uh, but then this fragrance also has a beautiful development. So as you are wearing this fragrance, it will go through different stages. It's not a linear fragrance. I would say uh, once the top notes fade a little bit, let's just say, and you start to get closer to the heart notes, to me, it develops this interesting latex-like latex. As it starts to go to the heart, it starts to develop this latex-like feel. Uh, it's very like, Mm, like how to describe like not waxy but but somehow waxy but not really waxy more like latex with that fiery passionate saffron touch that i was telling you about so you still have the spiciness you still have that like dry sweet 
rich rose rich in the sense that it's prominent but it's very dry in terms of the texture of the rose and to me it's a red rose you know again to me this fragrance is like passionate bold and opulent in a way uh with that same like leathery gasoline feel but now the gasoline feel to me fades away completely i don't get that undertone uh but at the same time like i've mentioned this fragrance is very like warm it's very like What's the word? It's it's like sunkist in a way, you know, like I've mentioned, you were to put all these things at the, on a table, you were to let it in the desert for a few hours and then you would go in and smell it under like hot beaming sun. And yeah, I'm imagining this is how it would smell in a way. Uh, and also you do get some like burning bahor type of smell in the dry down among all the other notes. So yeah, this fragrance has a beautiful development. My only complaint is that they could have done something about the longevity. I don't know, if you have tried this fragrance from this brand, I would love to hear uh, how do you find the longevity? Do you have any issues with the performance of this fragrance? Again, projection is great. Uh, sillage is great. I would overspray it as a reference, but longevity is not the best. I feel like after two hours and a half, three hours, it gets to be a, a skin scent. Like it, it dies down pretty fast, in my opinion. I would have hoped uh, to be a bit more like, you know, like a bit, to have a bit more strength in a way, because the notes themselves are very bold. So I was expecting the performance to match the level of boldness of the notes, if it, that, if it makes any sense. I don't think they did a bad job. I mean, scent wise, all these fragrances smell very beautiful. So I think they didn't like, what's the word? cut the cost when it comes to how these fragrances smell, you know? And also the presentation is very beautiful. I do think some of them don't last very long. To be more specific, uh, that one love that's supposed to be an inspiration of love, don't be shy. It doesn't have like four hour stops on my skin. Uh, on clothes, it does last a little bit better, but like, again, after five to six hours, I would still feel the need to reapply it. And this one adorable. Performance is not the best, but again, it, scent wise, they smell amazing. Now let's move on to their inspiration of uh, long-term de rouge okay so this fragrance i have to tell you it's it's a very interesting fragrance and it's a very like weird fragrance in a way like it smells yellow like very yellow in a sense it's interesting so on one hand i do detect that same like tuberose like feel that you have in all the fragrances that are in the lantern the scent family but compared to the og it's not as bubblegum it's not as uh playful in a sense it's a bit more serious to me this fragrance smells like this fragrance smells witchy in a sense i don't know and not because it's dark because the overall composition is not pretty dark but it's it has a very interesting like it has very interesting and unique notes that are put together in a sense. It's So to me, on one hand, you have that tuberose feel. It's a non-granny tuberose. It's not the kind of skanky tuberose. It's a tuberose that smells like tuberose, but it's quite, I would say, modern tuberose in a sense. Then you have something that smells like it smells green and herbal and slightly mentholated in the background that adds this like cooling sensation to the fragrance. You do have some like cold powdery facets. The overall fragrance is very cold and witchy in a way. And you have something that smells like wet concrete. I don't know how to describe this fragrance in a way. It's interesting. It's definitely not something that I have smelled everywhere. It's, it's definitely not for the girly girls. This fragrance to me is for women who, for women who appreciate richer floral fragrances, for women who know, um, like what it takes to pull off this kind of fragrances. This is not something that you would reach for when you want to feel ultra feminine and warm and radiating that day. To me, it's quite the opposite. You would reach for this one when you want to feel mysterious, different, and a bit witchy in a sense, you know? It's, to me, it takes a mature woman, not mature, but it takes a woman that knows how to pull off richer, uh, stronger floral fragrances, in my opinion. It's, it's definitely not something for everyone. It's it has to meet. When I smell all these notes together, like first of all, it's very hard to like deconstruct the fragrance in a way. It's it's hard. It's hard to like pinpoint each particular note. But when I am like actively trying to do that, it smells. It smells like this could pass as like an essential oil mix. You know that you would use for something like grounding or like. See now that it starts to develop a bit here on paper as well. You have the tuberose that you had in the opening. Now that like green mentholated feel, like oint, oint, ointment, ointment like feel moves into the background. 
uh, you start to get a cold jasmine here as well it still smells still very yellow in a way very cold you start to get this like soft earthy cold powdery hints here and there and something that to my nose translates as wet concrete like yeah mi mineral i don't know like so it's very like cold and grounding it's you still have something methylated in a sense but it's, it's a very interesting fragrance look personally i don't get many spices i know l'entardie rouge is supposed to be a spicy fragrance i don't get many spices in this one honestly but yeah in my opinion this is definitely not something that you would blind buy i think this is something that you should have at least somewhat of an experience when it comes to wearing richer floral fragrances um if you are interested in this fragrance, I would highly advise you to get a sample. Please do not blind by this fragrance because it's not something for everyone. Personally, for me, I don't think this fragrance suits me. Even though I like mysterious fragrances, but this goes into a different... But this one to me goes into a different direction. It's not the kind of direction that I would naturally gravitate towards. And I don't know if I would feel very comfortable wearing this fragrance. But I can tell you this, it's unique. It's unique. Um, and it does have somewhat of a statement feel to it in a sense. I don't know, it has something very mysterious and witchy about it. But it's not a very dark fragrance. Keep in mind, it's not that like earthiness that comes from patchouli, you know, so that like deep green herbal feel to it. No, it's more like that soft, powdery, slightly earthy feel that's very cold. And to me, like the earthiness comes from like the smell of something that reminds me at least of concrete or like wet concrete i don't know if it makes sense i don't know uh, but i love the smell of wet concrete also it also has something like slightly damp about it here and there uh yeah it's a very interesting fragrance definitely not something for everyone now let's move on to the version for men okay so this one is their inspiration of stronger with you by giorgio armani And this to me it's a modern fragrance like it's that classic cooling icy cooling masculine fragrance with something peppery with something fresh and spicy with with something like slightly aquatic and blue in a way it does have some sweetness it does have this like shower gel feel to it it does have this like refreshing uh quality to the scent as well it's Oh my god, you know what? First time I smelled this fragrance, you know what it reminded me of? When I was in uh, in school, like in 8th grade or something, and you know that, I mean, I don't know if you know, but depending on where you live, you might know this. Uh, there were like uh, girls uh, whose mothers were... Uh, like representatives for Avon or Oriflame or something like this but now I'm talking about Avon and they would bring to school like the catalog, you know, and um, I would always like I would always like uh, ask if I could smell the fragrances in the catalog and as I was like browsing through the pages I was smelling all the fragrances for women and then I would go to the fragrances for men you know and they also had they all had this like interesting names like arctic something ice something else in a way I don't know but it reminds me of smelling those fragrances you know of like really um if you remember, tell me if you remember this, I'm very curious, but you had to like really, um, you really had to like, I don't know how this action is called in English, but basically the paper was scented and you had to do this, you know, to get the scent out of the paper. And then you would smell your hand and you would pick up the fragrance. It smells like something, like something from those times in a way uh, for men. But it smells beautiful. See, now I feel like that like fresh spicy feel started to tone down a little bit. I get more of this like blue, fresh, aquatic facet of the fragrance. It smells timeless, it smells clean, it has a bit of a sweetness to it, like that sweet blue fresh kind of fragrance. Quite sporty, but you could dress it up, you could dress it down. It smells very masculine as well. And very fresh, very fresh. It does have this like slight shower gel facet to it. And also that like cooling sensation that you had in the opening now it starts to move a bit into the background i don't get it as much now look i have to be very honest i don't know how well it compares to the previous one uh, from armani but i can tell you that this one on its own it's a very beautiful casual fragrance also the bottle is very beautiful i will insert the bottle somewhere over here so you can see it so i think it would make a beautiful gift like if you have a man in your life and you would like him to give you would like uh, to give him something that's timeless that smells masculine it's very hard not to like this fragrance you know it's like honestly very hard because it's it's a dna that i am used to in a way like 
like I remember smelling these kind of fragrances on like my uh, older cousins growing up, you know, or like at different weddings in a way. So I am familiar with this fragrance and I enjoy it as well. It's, and also it's quite strong, it's quite strong, keep this in mind. It's beautiful, it's beautiful and it's something that you could really easily wear it to the gym, I don't know, basically everywhere, honestly everywhere. It's a very versatile fragrance in this sense. It does have a slight, like that freshness is slight artificial a bit, but it's not too bothering to my nose. Okay, so those are my thoughts about all the six fragrances. It seems like I decided to try all of them here. If you feel like you would like to know any additional information about any of these fragrances, feel free to leave me a comment down below and I promise that I will get back to you. Don't forget that all these fragrances were kindly sent to me by the people from Dubai Collection and thank you so much to Dubai collection for giving me the opportunity to test a new brand uh, on the market. If you want to try any of these fragrances, don't forget that they have full bottles as well as samples on their website. Uh, they provided my audience with a discount code that I will leave it at this moment right here on the screen. So if you want to try something uh, from this brand, from Maison Asrar, from Paris Corner, from other brands that you can find on their website, you feel free to use my discount code or feel free to not use my discount code. It's up to you. Okay, so overall I enjoy these fragrances. I think they are beautiful inspirations. I can tell that they didn't like like I've mentioned, cut the cost when it comes to the quality of the fragrance. Some of them, I would have preferred them to be a bit more long lasting, but that's just a personal preference. Also, let me know if you have tried any fragrances from this brand. I would definitely love to hear your thoughts on them, especially since it's a newer brand to my knowledge. Um, and I'm really curious to see what they bring out next. So yeah, thank you so much for watching you guys. Don't forget you can follow me on Instagram. As always, if you feel like you want to tell me something, please put it down below and I promise that I will get back to you. I will see you in my next video, but until then, thank you so, so, so much for watching and I want to wish you an amazing day wherever you are. Bye.